everybody, this is Kim. Welcome back. Um, have you ever been standing there with some other dashers in a restaurant just waiting for the food to come out? Do you ever wonder what their experience is like and why they're door dashing? And I don't know. I just started small talking. Um... A few days ago, while I was uh, out, and there were so many different DoorDashers, and we were just waiting so long at every restaurant. I saw a couple of the same people at the same restaurant, which was interesting. But I asked some questions, and here's the questions that I asked, and some of their responses. It's a very unofficial survey, but it was interesting. So I wanted to share uh, what I learned. I was curious, so I asked. When I'm stuck at a restaurant waiting for an order, I notice all the other food delivery people also waiting. We stand there staring at our phones, waiting for our food to be ready. Let's chat. It's just small talk, but I pay attention to what they say. I chatted with some Grubhub drivers, Postmates, and other DoorDash drivers. There were also people at these restaurants just waiting for their food, so that was kind of a fun little twist, too. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, um, I was asked them if they lived in this area. So I deliver in the area where I live. Um, but a lot of them come from other areas. Believe it or not, most don't live in the area. They live in surrounding areas, but find my area easier and more profitable. They said that uh, because of all the traffic and... Parking is very difficult in some areas, and some of the areas have so many drivers that they can't even get uh, an offer. So they come out to the suburbs where things are a little more spread out, and parking is easier. You know, we're mostly single-family homes. I mean, there are condos and apartments, but not to the same extent as, you know, the inner city area would be. And this other guy I was talking to, this, this particular man, I see him a lot. He's very nice. He's very friendly, and uh, we chat. Um, he lives in the San Fernando Valley in an area that's not very safe. Um, he was telling me that his uh, area, it, he feels in danger, and that when he leaves his car parked, he's afraid he's going to come out and it's going to be stolen or damaged or something. And he said that you have to keep looking behind you because people just mess with you. And I'm like, oh my god, that's terrible. So he comes out to our area. He just says it's safer and he doesn't mind driving out here. So, and that's probably over an hour away from where he lives that he comes to. So, you know, I guess it's worthwhile if you're going to be able to make more money. And it seems easier. I don't know if it really is easier, but they all kind of said it was easier out here. So, anyways, it was interesting. Um, Another thing that they were saying about our area versus other areas is that there are, um, I don't want to just say wealthy people, but there are some upper class areas where they feel like they get better tips. So, um, t to be honest, I haven't noticed that to be true. My best tips have been from just regular, you know, middle class areas. The very wealthy areas don't seem to tip any more than anyone else. Maybe that's why they're rich. They keep their money. <laughs> but anyways, it was interesting to hear what everyone was saying. Um, I asked if they did this full time. Most do. I was really shocked to hear that actually because in my opinion, I don't think it's consistent enough to rely on full-time. There are so many drivers and so many, only so many restaurants. I don't know. One lady does it 12 hours every single day. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. And she says she makes really good money. She's a single parent and this is how she supports her family. So good for her. Um... And a few people commented that they lost their jobs due to the COVID stay-at-home orders, and this is how they pay their bills. And I guess if you're in that position, you do what you have to do. 
and if they've got to drive around all day and deliver food then that's what they're going to do and more power to them and I wish them success I'm glad I'm not in that position <laughs> but if I was maybe I'd be doing the same thing uh, then I asked him what do you do when you have to wait a really long time for the food to be prepared this was interesting um, I was talking with a Grubhub. I think he was Grubhub. And he said that they're not timed. So he could sit there for a half hour and it doesn't negatively affect him. He just can't get another order until he's done. And I think it was Grubhub. Now I can't remember. Um, you know, we get penalized if we're late to deliver. You know, our uh, on time or early ranking goes down. So you don't want to sit there for a half hour every time. Not only will your ranking go down, but you're going to make less money because you're sitting there waiting. So, um, yeah, that was interesting that what they all had a little bit of different perspective. One guy told me, this is a DoorDash delivery guy, told me that he waits exactly 10 minutes and then he unassigns. He doesn't wait more than 10 minutes. He's got a little timer on his phone and as soon as 10 minutes gets, he just leaves. I don't know how he does that with his ranking because it seems like I wait 10 minutes a lot. Tonight, however, I went out and all I never had to wait more than one minute until the very last place I went. That was a sushi place that took forever. I ended up unassigning because it was going to be another. I waited about 20, 25 minutes and um, it was going to probably be at least another 20 more minutes. So I unassigned that one. But the whole rest of the night, I'd walk in and it was pretty much ready. I went to an Indian place and that one had a wait of about 10 minutes. But um, yeah, that was the longest. So it wasn't bad. But anyways, I don't have a strict rule on when I'm going to unassign. I usually try to determine whether or not I can get there to deliver on time. This is something that confuses me. So when you get an order, and let's say you pick it up at 6.30, and you have to, then you pick it up, and then it has a time to deliver. And let's say it's, you know, 20 minutes later, and the house is, you know, five miles away or whatever. You're going to make it no problem. But every once in a while, I'll get one that's like three minutes to deliver it, and it's like six miles away. There's no way you're going to get there in three minutes. I don't know how DoorDash determines that time from when you're leaving the restaurant with the food and how long it's supposed to take you to deliver it. Um, I know you see it up front, but sometimes the, the time changes. So I'm not sure how that algorithm works on um, how they think you're going to get there so fast. <laughs> there's red lights. There's, there's things that stop you along the way, and you can't go 100 miles an hour. So, Anyways, you have to come up with a time that you're comfortable with and how long you're willing to wait. Okay, so another person told me they just wait because they already spent so much time they don't want to hope that they get, you know, they waste time waiting for another offer when they've already got this offer and they don't want to give up the tip that might be included. So they'll just sit and wait and they don't care if they're, if they're late delivering. They don't want to um, have to worry about getting another offer or giving up that tip. And then a few people said they weigh the wait time differently depending on what the delivery time is and how quickly they think they can get there to the uh, person's house. And that's kind of where I am. I'm in this bottom section right here. I kind of feel the same. I weigh it based on how long it's going to take me to get to their house. And if I feel like I have time, I'll wait. If I don't have time, I'm not going to wait. Um, and then this was the last question. Uh, do you pretty much stay busy during the entire dash? DoorDash drivers said they can stay pretty busy, but sometimes they have to take the not-so-great offers. So if they're sitting there waiting and waiting, um, they'll take a lower offer just so that they can get something. Um, and then, like, one guy was saying that he has a path that he likes to follow, a geographical path from location to location, and... Sometimes he'll take a lower one if it gets him over to the location where he wants to be. So he figures, well, it's paying for him to drive over to that other location. That makes sense, actually. The Grubhub drivers don't seem to stay as busy. 
they were telling me they have a lot of downtime. And uh, this one lady I was talking to, she said a lot of times she'll just go home and then wait for an offer while she's at home. Um, there's only been one Postmates person so far that I've actually talked to. And um, she said she's super picky about the offers she accepts. So she also has a lot of downtime. But um, she doesn't go unless it's worth her while. So anyways, I just found it very interesting. When I'm dashing, for the most part, stay pretty busy. You know, I might have five minutes here, you know, five minutes there. But pretty much as soon as I'm done with one, as soon as you're back in restaurant range, I start getting more offers. Not always great ones, but at least I'm getting offers. So anyways, those were the questions I asked. I found it really interesting. Um, and I'm going to keep talking to the dashers. and Maybe I'll share some more information with you. But uh, I'd be interested to see if you have any um, comments or questions or things that you have talked to other dashers about or if your experience differs from the ones that I listed here. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe. I need subscribers. Um, I'm going to be posting more videos soon, so uh, you don't want to miss them. So, thanks for visiting.